Hello, this is Lino Tatos from the Training Bus, and in this uh, video, we will continue on the previous one. Um, what we where we stopped at in the previous video is that we created a very simple hello world prompt flow that just created a joke for me, just to explain the different pieces available in a prompt flow. Uh, this is good for uh, definitely developing and testing this inside of the user interface for Azure AI Studio. But what if you'd like to deploy this for other members to, or for the public even to be able to hit it, uh, getting an endpoint and having an API key to hit that with. So you'll notice here my compute session is still running and now I can deploy it. So let's go ahead and click on deploy for our previous joke that we created in the prompt flow. We'll say deploy. And now I'll go, go ahead and give it a name. Um, automatically, it will create some letters for you, like RDOCJ. Every time you create one, it will invent a few uh, letters, four or five of them for you. If I have an existing endpoint, I can do that. I don't have one, so I'm going to create a brand new one. And it will put a one for the first version, so you can have multiple deployment names for the same endpoints if you'd like as well. This is where you also will need to... Uh, choose the size of the VM that you'd like to deploy for, uh, deploy with. Uh, in my case in here, I'm going to choose something pretty small. Um, maybe I can even go with a 16 core for uh, 7 cents per hour. That's much better than 29 cents, but it's no big deal. I'm going to leave it for right now. I'm going to delete it later. And I'm going to do a poor man instance. We're going to go ahead and use only one instance for right now. Might be a good idea to keep the uh, inferencing data collection. You will see that later on for the monitoring uh, that would be important to leave it on as well. But that's great. I'm going to say next. And from there, you can actually say that I'd like the authentication type to be based on a key based API key, or I can use enter ID tokens or Azure ML token based. I'm going to leave it as a key base for right now. And I'm going to leave everything else the same. Say next. I'm not going to use any deployment tags or anything, but it's a good idea to tag it so you can actually see the budget. Maybe multiple uh, departments in the same company or uh, multiple children company underneath one mother company, for instance, that you would like to find out the cost center for each and every single one of them. All right, I'm going to say next. Uh, this will be the output, the joke in a string that's the included in the endpoint. And that's the only thing that we will make available through the endpoint for the score itself. Uh, and I'm actually having my connection, which is called the joke, available under this OpenAI, Azure OpenAI um, uh, connection right there. And it's going to be using GPT-4, which is the only one that I have in my deployment for right now. Great. Let's go ahead and say next. These are all the final information that I told my deployment to use regarding the compute power, the connection, the model, everything else. All right. I'm going to say go ahead and create. And um, that will start creating and it will take probably about maybe a minute uh, to have this deployment ready for me. So we'll come back as soon as we are notified all the way at the top in here that the deployment is done. You'll notice if I open this up, you will see it running and it's in progress. I will come back as soon as it, uh, it says that it's done. All right, I came back after maybe about a minute and a half to check on things and it looks like the endpoint has been completed. Now it's working on the uh, first deployment, it has the dash one um, still going and the prompt flow is going as well. We'll give it another minute and we'll come back after everything has been completed. Also, while we're waiting for it to complete, I can dismiss it from here. And if I go back to my deployments all the way at the bottom, remember we deployed the GPT-4. Notice the new deployment for our own VM for inferencing is happening right here. It says in the, in the state of creating, it is not completed yet. When it's done, it will be succeeded. So I can actually click on that deployment and I can actually monitor what exactly is going on. So you see provisioning status creating. Um, I will know that actually my target endpoint, this is what the target endpoint on that VM that I chose will be there. There's the name, it will go slash score, uh, and then we'll have the authentication type key itself in here. And it's not available right now, but when this is completed, I will be able to have access to the, to the key as well. So all of these things are happening and I can tell exactly um, where all the stuff fits as far as the deployment for my joke. It's not only happening on a compute for testing or for development, but now I'm deploying this to be able to get to it as well. Let's give it another couple of minutes and see if we can actually see what happens. Notice while it's in the middle of creating at the top, it says details and logs. But once it's successful, we're going to get a lot more stuff at the top in here. It will be details, tests, consume, logs monitoring everything will be available for that deployed model as well we'll see you in another second when this comes back hopefully excellent it's done it took a few minutes but it will come back and says the provisioning of the city is successful 
um, and it will show us the traffic allocation is 100%. They have one instance only. That is my uh, endpoint URI right there, and that is the key right there. You can actually see, you can copy and paste that if you'd like to run it outside of the prompt flow as well. But all the way at the, at the top, you'll see details, tests, consume, monitoring, and logs. So if I click on test, for instance, I would be able to hit that endpoint, the one with the slash score that you see in the, in the previous screen, to be able to test it. So this is my topic. Remember, in the previous video, we used fruits, for instance. So I'm going to come in here, would we'll say, make, give me a joke about fruit, all right? And I can test it right there. We'll say test, and we'll see what comes up. It says, why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. All right. Very, very funny. All right. Uh, the test result, um, I can actually see the logs. By going to the logs, I can see exactly what happened between the LLM. And this can get a lot more interesting once you set orchestrators in the future. Maybe it's not as simple as taking a question and sending to the LLM. Maybe you would like to use orchestration with Langchain, with Semantic Kernel. Maybe you would like to bring in your own uh, documents and your own um, data coming in in a data lake or one lake or SharePoint and you'd like to embed them and, uh, and uh, vectorize the whole thing so you can actually monitor here in the logs exactly what happened and the negotiation going back and forth between the LLM and the orchestrators going back and forth until the LLM was confident enough to say I got an answer I can reply right now so these things could get a lot more fun as well and for the consumer here i get to see what the endpoint is that's the same one we saw before and i get a primary key and a secondary key you can choose whichever one you want and they even give you the code if you would like uh, to use it in javascript in python in c sharp and in r you just have to copy and paste let's go ahead and do one in python i'm going to click on python in here that is the entire code that will allow you to consume that specific endpoint so i'm going to copy that and let's go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to go ahead and open up in Visual Studio Code. All right. So I'm going to go to my E drive in here. Let's go ahead and create a new folder really quickly. And in that folder, let me go ahead and just call it uh, uh, Test Prompt Flow. It's good enough for me. Double click that. Let me open it up in, uh, in code. Let's say Open with Code. And there it is. All righty. And just to test it really quickly locally on my machine in here, I'm going to create a new file and we'll call, for instance, test. Dot, and I can create a Python file, py uh, for py, uh, or I can actually even easier create a notebook of whatever kind and I can actually make it happen in here as well. So let's go ahead and say um, i py and b. There you go. And inside of there, I'm going to come in here and we'll paste the code that we got from the consume for Python. We'll say control V there. And I'm going to get all my code that I got from there. All right. So now I'm going to say control S to save. And there is a couple of things that you need to change as well. Notice there is a comment in here to tell you that the data being passed, because this is a completion, this is not a chat. Okay. We said this is standard flow. You need to pass it in a JSON format. So remember what it was called? It was called topic, right? So I need to go back in here and we'll say something like topic and uh, we'll give it a name, for instance, uh, give it something like fruits, like we did before, we'll say fruits. Of course, you can play around with this to find out, but it has to be in a JSON format like this. The only other thing is you will need to pass your own API key from whatever application, curl, uh, postman, or here from Python, for instance, I need to pass it in here. So let me steal that from the consume page as well. There it is. I'm going to copy the first primary key and then we'll go back in here and we'll do a control V on this guy as well. All righty. I'm actually uh, ready to run this. Usually I don't like to import a lot of different things straight on the machine. I usually create a VN um, virtual environment and you'll see it in here so that whenever I pip something into the system, it will do better. But this is a very simple thing. I'm just going to go ahead and run it and say run. And we'll say use a Python environment. I'm going to use uh, the latest, for instance, uh, 11.6 is fine with me. And then we will go all the way to the bottom. And there it is. It says, why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. Um, <laughs> and uh, you can run this and test it yourself. So hopefully that gives you an idea. Of course, let me close all of that and bring back our code in here. So you can consume it in C Sharp, uh, in R, in JavaScript, however you'd like just to make sure that you can get to it. So testing it live or consuming it. Later on, we will see how to do the monitoring as well to be able to uh, do evaluation on the models from groundedness 
to uh, uh, similarities whenever you're using, for instance, indexing and embedding and so on. So it should be a lot of fun. Hopefully you liked the video so far. Uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you again in future videos uh, from uh, Omlino TV. Thank you.